In the presidential debate, most of the candidates supported legal immigration, but Kasich and Trump said, we've got to build that wall. We're back with our panel, DeRoy Murdoch of National Review, Hadley Heath Manning of the Independent Women's Forum, and Austin Peterson of Libertarian Republic. So it's popular to say build a wall, and they can do it, and Mexico will pay for it. And <laughs> what's wrong with that? Yeah, that just goes to show that if you're a Republican, you can, you can push as much socialism as you want, but if you say that you want to build a wall, well, then you are guaranteed to get a vote. So to me, I think that it shows a fundamental misunderstanding of the free market view on um, economics when it comes to immigration because nobody likes to pay $10 for a cheeseburger. Everybody on a consumer standpoint likes to have lower prices. And when we have migrant labor, whether or not it's legal or illegal, it definitely brings prices down. So if you're for a free market, you have to be for a free market and labor as well as... Oh, in that's why consumers. they hate you liber us libertarians <laughs> no. for this bizarre oblique reasoning, but you ought to come here legally. As Trump said, amnesty is unfair to those in line. Did the pilgrims and come so, here legally? I mean, you know... No, they, but it's different now. People want to kill us. We have an established country we're trying to protect. But isn't the point that the, most of the illegals don't even come here from Mexico or across the place where they would build a wall? I think Trump's absolutely right on that score. My mom and dad are immigrants. They're from Costa Rica. And when they came to the United States, they didn't run across the border. You know what they did? They went to the U.S. Embassy. They filled out the paperwork. And they came in legally with passports and visas. If they want to couldn't today. We make America make well, it impossible. We, we need to make legal immigration uh, possible and, and, and manage that. And I know I've got a friend of mine from Russia. He came in legally, but he's been trying to get a green card and all that sort of thing. I understand he spent something like eighty thousand dollars getting all of his legal paperwork to, to, to get this situation. Where he's finally been able to get a green card. I said jokingly said to him, I said, you know, you should just you should have run across the border like everyone else. It would have been a lot easier. We need to make legal immigration streamline and make that make sense and we also have to be fair to the people who are waiting in line like my Russian friend and make sure that they're treated fairly and not jump over those people and just say alright you, you got in here illegally we're gonna give you all kinds of free stuff right now you it know, can free take education, 40, all that other 60, stuff. 130 years if you're a Mexican teenager exactly and in fairness to Republicans this issue divides them greatly and you could hear from the applause lines on either side you know I think Securing the border is something that gets applause, whether or not you say specifically you're going to build a wall. But there are pro-growth, pro-opportunity Republicans who favor some kind of immigration reform that would actually allow for more legal immigration and growth in the labor supply, like you say. It's true, like Marco Rubio and Jeb exactly. Bush, they tend to be more libertarian on immigration. Exactly. But Donald Trump, of course, is more like the... Uh, the, uh, his Democrat opponent, Bernie Sanders, where they both believe that those immigrants are taking our jobs. And so and they paint the economy like a zero-sum game. Whatever you think, people go around a wall and they fly in and overstay a visa. Just briefly, tax reform. Ben Carson says he wants this 10% tax. It's inspired by God. But, you know, in the Bible, uh, in Samuel 8.17, the, uh, the Jews want a king and the prophet says... You don't want a king. He'll take 10% of your flocks. You will become his servants. We should be so lucky. 10%, yeah. right. Was, that was a threat then. Now it's 40% total. About. Can we vote for that king? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> God said, give us the king, and this was, a, this was a warning to the Israelites that they should not give someone total power over them. And I think that that is a very libertarian lesson. And, you know, Jesus also said, you know, give to Caesar what is Caesar and give to God and what, what is God's. There are a lot of libertarian Christians out there that believe in private charity and private tithing. I think Ben Carson has his heart in the right place. And while I think that perhaps where he goes to get his support, it may not be an economics textbook that I would prefer, but I think his heart is in the right place, and he's a good man, and I appreciate his, his 10 percent would be a great thing. Yeah. It's just remarkable. It is so different from what Samuel con considered horrible. Right. Actually, I had, I, I've written about this. The National Taxpayers Union, I asked them to do some rough figures on this for me. And I said, what if we had a tax plan where we had no deductions whatsoever and everybody paid in? What, what tax rate would you need to be roughly revenue neutral? And they said about 9.8, 9.9%. So if you did about 10%, I think you actually could bring about the same amount of revenue we bring in. No deductions, so we wouldn't have the tax code playing all sorts of games and, and picking winners and losers. And everybody has skin in the game. Now, you may get more in benefits out than you put in, but everybody, everyone has to pay in. And that's the tax Hadley, you say the, that they fa that the tax foundation favors Rubio's plan. Well, in terms of economic growth, that's absolutely correct, because they say that not only will his tax plan change those individual rates, it's not a flat tax, it's not a fair tax, there's still a progressive income scale for people based on their income, but they also, uh, the Rubio plan at least, allows for subchapter S corporations and sole proprietorships, those smallest of businesses, to file uh, uh, 
basically the same as a corporate tax rate, and under the Rubio plan, that would be 25%. So that change would allow for more job creation and would treat small businesses and larger businesses on a level playing field. I don't like any of these tax plans, John, to be quite honest. And I'll tell you this, that uh, they pass cigarette taxes to say, oh, we want to stop people from smoking. So what are income taxes supposed to stop people from doing? <laughs> <laughs> Making income. <laughs> Good line. Good work. Nice. And Carly is right. In some countries, they have, like Hong Kong, they have a three-page or shorter form, and it works. Next, you, our audience, uh, all students tonight, high school and college, you get to give your take on the debate.